did you see Desmond Ryan in the VIP? Oh, was that him? Yeah, he was sitting next to Cloudy. Oh, right. With it's that, um, really exciting backstage. That new SABC uniform. There's a lot of green and gold in that, eh? <laughs> I didn't see any red. Well, Did you see any red? Well, there were some blue lights, so I think it balances it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really impressed with John, though. I think he'd make a good Madam Speaker. All he needs is a duke and maybe some heavies, some <laughs> bodyguards. Hey? <laughs> it was the chicken. I, I, I don't know. Would that chicken suit be parliamentary? Listen, the, well, the thing is, it go on in Parliament. <laughs> I think Masiva it Lakota, was. maybe. <laughs> Anyway, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here, and congratulations for making it here through peak hour traffic, the accident, the Mall of Africa traffic um, taxi war, um, and the terror alert. So <laughs> it's uh, quite an obstacle race getting here, so congratulations. Um, and if uh, Ambassador Gaspard is here already, thank you so much for being here. We all feel really safe <laughs> that you're with us. If there's anyone here from Durko and you would like to be introduced to uh, the Ambassador, please speak to one of the Daily Maverick <laughs> staff. We'll be happy to introduce you. Um, so this year's gathering is a little different from um, last year. Last year we had a lovely chat up here, but this is an election year. So the questions are going to be a little tougher. And um, we're not here really to make anyone look good or bad. We're just here to ask the questions, so don't fight with us. Um, be nice, fighters. I hope you're going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we are in the midst of an intense um, uh, local government election campaign. So there are many issues, and um, there are many tough issues. So let's see how we get through them. I think that's code for we're all really depressed, and we're hoping someone will make us optimistic by the end of the day. Maybe it'll be the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so to start us off this morning, we have the Treasurer General of the African National Congress, Dr. Zweli Mkhize. Dr. Mkhize was elected as TG at the um, ANC's 2012 Mangaung Conference. You remember that? That was exciting. I was there. That, that was, it was Etiquini who nominated him, right? <laughs> oh, I so don't it was remember. about two months before that he became TG. Yes. And um, he is one of the most powerful people in the country, being a member of the top six, ANC Top Six. He is known to be a kingmaker. We don't know if that's true, that's what they say. And apparently he's destined for greater heights, but that will be the subject of next year's gathering, which I hope <laughs> um, you'll all be there for, yeah, for. So let's call up the Treasurer General of the African National Congress, Dr. Zweli Mkhize. Please welcome him. Thank you. Thank you, Karat and uh, Ranjani. Ladies and gentlemen, I see you set me up even before I start. I must start by apologizing for my throat, my voice, and uh, I'm a bit stuffy. Uh, might be a strange ap uh, apology coming from a doctor, but I uh, must just assure you that I'm now retired. So um, I hope you can uh, um, be patient with my voice. Thank you very much. Uh, may I thank the Delhi Mavarik and all its associates for inviting, uh, inviting us to this uh, gathering to share our views with regard to the coming local government election. The ANC, the ANC takes the matter of elections very seriously as an opportunity to report to the electorate on the progress of and achievements in implementing the mandate given to us in the previous elections. We use the opportunity to evaluate the outstanding work that lies ahead still to be achieved. We believe the votes, like trust, must be earned and never taken for granted. State South Africa released its annual general household survey of 2015 last week and confirmed for us that indeed South Africa is an extremely different country from the country we inherited in 1994. <coughs> Excuse me. The South Africa of today is better than South Africa of yesterday and yesteryear. Together with our people, we have registered many achievements that we should all take pride in. We make a distinction between unmet expectations and aspirations as opposed to research-based evidence of the general improvement of the lives of our people confirmed by statistical surveys and independent research. For those who care to find it, such data is available and should be used to expose negative narrative and uh, ensure that we do not have uh, the undermining of positive progress 
and th strive and, and, try and, and, and avoid those who th thrive on creating panic and mislead people, we must always give a, try and give an account which is balanced, uh, which is helpful to build our nation. As the ANC, we do acknowledge that we have also made some mistakes from which we must continue to learn, and we want to emphasize that we have learned from many of the mistakes that we, we committed in trying to build, we'll try, try and build from the lessons of the past 22 years to improve our performance. Whilst we must accept criticism, where it is due, we must also resist the temptation of those who would want to suggest there's no progress that has been made in taking South Africa forward. We have registered good progress, despite the fact that 22 years is too short a time to build a country and undo legacies of colonial past. The upcoming government elections <clears throat> provide a great, great opportunity for us to further strengthen our program on social, political, and economic transformation. Our commitment to creating an unracial, non-sexist, democratic, and prosperous country is once again renewed in line with our local government elections theme, together advancing people's power, local government is in your hands. <coughs> so we're moving a step further in making people at the, to, to be at the center of governance, and our call is simple, that our people must work with, the, with their ANC to ensure that it is indeed a true vehicle for efficient, efficient delivery of services. We have listened and heard citizens' concerns regarding the manner in which councillors were chosen in the past. It's for this reason that we have rigorously reviewed the candidate selection and involved communities in the process of nominating councillors for the forthcoming 2016 elections. This has helped the ANC to choose the best candidate to be public representatives. We've also had a call for councillors to, to be more visible and accessible to the communities which they represent, and as such, we have ensured that our councillors should reside in areas in which they were elected and hold regular meetings with our communities to give reports and, give, uh, and get feedback. We'll monitor this and continue to improve on it. In cases where the ANC councillor did not perform well, we encourage active uh, citizen participation by calling on all the citizens to hold those representatives accountable and report any complaints and concerns. We have acted on these concerns by replacing some councillors and strengthening others. Councillors will also be required to sign performance and accountability agreements. State South Africa survey confirms the progress in the delivery of various services such as water, electricity, amongst others, delivered by municipalities. This confirms the correctness of the pro poor policies of the ANC which protect the poor and the vulnerable communities. Whilst uh, municipalities will cooperate with the national and provincial governments, we have created a program of what we call Back to Basics, which has been adopted to create efficiency in local government. In this program, which we started after the last election, the councillors are directed to focus to get the basics right, such as maintenance of clean environment, cutting grass on veggies of the streets, fixing potholes, ensuring street lights are working, punctuality of meetings, reduction of bureaucracy, speedy issuance of permits and zoning approvals, etc. Those basics are important to ensure we've got working municipalities. We also place em emphasis on the creation of the requisite skills to ensure that the managers appointed have appropriate managerial, financial, technical, and engineering and other skills. We'll bring additional engineering proje uh, project management, planning, and financial management skills from other tiers of government to support municipalities, especially those which are ailing and are poor. ANC will also build capacity to, to undertake long-term planning as well as monitoring evaluation in municipalities. This will include early warning mechanism to identify areas where challenges may arise. The ANC will also focus on mobilizing communities to fight crime and drug abuse, encouraging rehabilitation of offenders and creation of safer neighborhoods. This will include the creation of partnership to enhance the, uh, the role of civil society, religious and traditional communities in building social cohesion and active citizenry. So in services, in electricity, the household, the percentage of household 
connected has increased to 86 percent. This amount to about 13 million households, according to the states, the states SA uh, General House, Household Survey. Over two, 2 million of these are indigent households which are receiving free electricity from municipalities, and we want to build on that. Water and sanitation, uh, by 2014, the percentage of uh, a household with access to piped water has increased to uh, uh, almost 90 percent. This includes communal taps and piped uh, waters in the water in the dwellings. Around 5 million of the indigent poor households have received free basic uh, water from municipalities. To further expand access to water in the next, uh, ac uh, next five years, we'll increase the capacity of existing dams and build new dams and improve water treatment infrastructure. And this becomes more urgent now with the drought that we've gone through. Construction of such infrastructure improves supply of water to neighboring communities and generate economic opportunities such as mining, industrial development, agriculture, and other sectors. To date, the NC government has increased access to basic sanitation services to 79%. In the next five years, we will roll out this sanitation further into informal settlements. And proper sanitation means dignity for our people, and its, all, its provision is a major factor in the prevention of communicable diseases and the reduction of child mortality. On education, more than 9 million <coughs> children who come from poor households do not pay school fees and benefit from school feeding schemes. This has had significant impact in reducing school dropout. We've also offered more opportunities for young people in higher education, student loans now being converted into bursaries uh, for qualifying final year students, and also a number of students benefiting from the NSFAS and the latest in, um, investment has gone up beyond 9 billion per annum. And of course, this has increased the students from the uh, uh, disadvantaged communities to almost 800,000. And this has been a huge increase, which is really higher than anything that has happened in the past. We also want to ensure that there's improvement of learning and teaching. We'll work with parents, teachers, students, and relevant stakeholders to improve the quality of learning and teaching. We challenge the teacher unions and parents association to show equal commitment in supporting the improvement of the quality of education. Public representatives must become champions of education. Councillors must assist in ensuring adequate services such as water, sanitation, electricity to schools, as well as mobilizing communities to protect education infrastructure. Local communities and leaders should also desist from allowing destruction of schools and other facilities during public protests. In health, municipalities work together with other levels of government to provide what is called municipal services. The most outstanding achievement in this area is a drastic improvement in the health of the citizens. Life expectancy has increased from 53 years to 64 years, which means that South Africans are much more healthier the, uh, than they were 10 years ago particularly as a result of the rollout of the antiretroviral program of 4 million people, which is the largest in the world. On the economy, we reiterate that the major enemy facing all our people in our country is the triple challenge of poverty and inequality and, in, uh, and unemployment. We hold our elections in the midst of economic downturn. The economy has shrunk to grow at less than 1% and has shed thousands of jobs in retrenchment, closure of companies, lessening of investment flows, in terms of our NDP, we need to grow at over 5%. And in the context of this, <coughs> excuse me, we are concerned about the results that have just uh, come out in the, uh, recently, and we are determined to turn this situation around and ensure economic recovery and attract more investment. Unemployment is worse amongst the youth and women in rural and peri-urban areas. This, is, impact, the, this uh, uh, is the impact of apartheid spatial planning. Rural poverty and urban migration means extreme squalor exists a stone throw away from suburban opulence. So for example, if you look at Kailicha, which is in the doorsteps of Cape Town, it was established as an apartheid dumping ground in the mid-80s as part of the Group Areas Act. In the last 10 years, the population has risen from 400,000 to 2.4 million, and 50% of whom are under 19 of age. Unemployment is about 73%, and 70% of people there are in checks. The slow rate of growth has resulted in justified concern among South Africans about possible relegation to junk status. To this end, government has moved with speed 
to effect fiscal consolidation whilst protecting the services to the poor and the vulnerable, investing in infrastructure, and engage in consensus building initiatives with business and labor to ensure industrial harmony and build confidence. The efforts, <coughs> these efforts, <coughs> excuse me, these efforts have been recognized by the IMF and the rating agencies and all of us have been relieved to see that Moody's, Standard and Poor and Fitch, all of them did not downgrade our status, which is an acknowledgement of the optimistic view on the resilience of our economy and the leadership demonstrated by government and its partners. The NC has concrete plans to respond to the slow growth and create jobs, and our municipalities, guided by the NDP, will place the creation of jobs and sustainable livelihood at the center of local economic programs. At national level, the nine-point plan is being implemented by the ANC government to boost growth and job creation in various sectors such as the ocean economy, agriculture, mining, energy, information technology, industrial manufacturing, water and sanitation, tourism, and so on. It is also quite important to note that there has been changes and, and uh, improvements. All of us no longer remember there was such a time when we had load shedding, and of course we are seeing uh, the improvement <coughs> on the energy side with the whole uh, uh, coming to stream of various uh, new uh, power generation plant and the very successful um, renewable energy program, uh, which is uh, solar and wind. And there's also the expanded public works program have registered huge um, successes. We understand that those are temporary uh, jobs, but they do add an impact in fighting poverty. Local economic development we want to ensure that municipalities incorporate science, technology in their programs as catalysts for local economic development. We we'll also encourage our municipalities to support township and village economies, including access to microfinance for SMMEs and cooperatives. Municipalities must also, must also buy goods and services from local businesses with a bias to youth and women enterprises. ANC also encourage municipalities to promote small business sector protect informal traders, build rural economies, and create an environment to promote water industries and support the creation of black industrialists, emphasizing the cooperation between industries and vocational training to ensure that the skills development. Wrap up. One minute? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Then, of, of course, uh, we want to emphasize our concern on the issues of corruption that we want our councillors to work very hard on dealing with the issue of corruption. There's also uh, quite a lot of focus on ensuring clean and good governance. Uh, we've been looking at the uh, Auditor, uh, Auditor General uh, out, uh, um, reports that have come recently. There's a lot of good news that is coming out. I was looking at the interesting article by Mark Schussler, which is talking about, he says, he calls it ignore the good news at your peril. I think we need to be able to focus on a lot of those uh, successful stories that are reported there. We do have concerns about the issues of uh, protests. I think the, the sources thereof are various. We can talk about them, I'm sure, when we deal with the questions and answers. But at the end of the day, we would like to focus on ensuring that we um, restore the trust of our communities to the local representatives and the, the councillors that are elected ensuring that they focus on service to the communities and that they focus on humility, focus, focusing on ensuring that the communities, they stay in touch with the communities so that we do not have frustration as a, as a result of lack of communication, part of which has been the reason why there is a, a lot of protest despite the fact that the service delivery record, such as the place in Gauteng, is actually good. With those words, ladies and gentlemen, we look forward to a conversation with you. Thank you.